it's time to unmask the magic. That's pretty much the buzzword, as Mardi Gras is the official theme for Met Day 2023, and there's certainly lots of excitement around ever since this has been published. Everyone wanting a winner, and I love how the front page of computer form puts it into perspective. Cape Town's greatest race, Cape Town's greatest race day. Hello again, racing fans. Good to have you with us for this week's edition of Commentator Smith's Comments, where we'll be looking in depth at the Cape Town Met, sponsored by World Sports Betting. And there's certainly lots of excitement around town. Everywhere I've gone, everyone I've bumped into, everyone that's even stopped me where I've been over the last couple of days, have been talking nothing other than WSB Cape Town Met. In fact, people have been showing me their offers, draw tickets, their sweepstake tickets. They've been to charity events. They've attended card calls to get better prices. They've even gone to panel discussions to try and get as much information as possible in the build-up to the big day. Hope you've got your tickets and haven't left it for too late because there are 12 races on the card. And that is what we can look forward to. And it's a day that also offers lots of bidding opportunities. In fact, on the front page of the computer form, you will see the entire betting menu that is available. There's three jackpots, the first of which starts in the first race. There's two buy pots. The second one will probably be the one attracting attention because there's a 200,000 rand carryover. And that pool is estimated to get to 1 million rand. There is also a mega pick six pool with a million rand carry forward estimated to get to 10 million. And then, of course, we have the WSB Cape Town Met Quartet Maxi Pool that's also boosted by a million rand. And that's set to get to about 5 million rand when that race jumps at just after 5 on Saturday afternoon. But that's not all. All wins, place, exactors, swingers and quinellas from races 4 to 12 will go into the big Hong Kong whirlpools. So I suggest you make sure that you get your bets on Timeously, that you've topped up your tab online account. With all the load shedding about, that's probably the best way to have the tote at your fingertips to be able to get on at your convenience wherever you are. It's the feature races on the card that I'll be concentrating on because they primarily do form the better part of the carry forward pick six. Race four is the first grade one of the day. The Schweppes Mallorca Stakes wait for age to be run over 1600 meters. A small yet quality field of six horses will face the starter and I'm looking no further than my favorite filly in training, number three, Captain's Ransom. She's back for the third year in a row to defend her crown. She now goes over a trip she's much better suited to. She was closing quickly on Make It Snappy in the Paddock Stakes last time out. And Make It Snappy, of course, takes her place in the WSB Cape Town Met. I think Captain's Ransom, all fingers point to her as a ready-made banker in the opening leg of the Carry Forward Pick Six. And she's one of the horses I'm most looking forward to following on the day. Race five is the Cape Racing Merit Rated 74 Handicap. A field of 15 runners, your choice. Either go short, add a couple. Depending on how you're going to structure your perm, you may just have to take a smaller percentage because it's a competitive race day and it doesn't get any easier as we get to race six, the next of the feature races on the card. The City of Cape Town Summer Juvenile Stakes listed to be run over 1,100 metres. And here we have a full field of 16 plus reserve runners. So this is a race where you're certainly going to have to spend a bit of time you're going to have to dissect the form, probably go look at breeding, see what the offsprings have done, look at which barrier draws works best, which jockey-trainer combination are in devastating form at the moment because you're going to need quite a few to safely see you through. In fact, I've narrowed it down to possibly one of five horses who will take the lion's share of the prize money. You have to include number one, Golden Sickle. Richard Free, Justin Snaith can never be left out. A winner on debut, set up close and then pull clear in the closing stages. I think there's more to come from one golden sickle. The horse I thought that impressed me the most out of all of them in the lineup is number five, the abdicator, when he won on debut. He didn't get the best of starts, but he recovered quickly. He was up there from the word go and he pulled clear into the closing stages, certainly suggesting that he will enjoy the step up in trip. And Louis Mkotwa and Brett Crawford are in very good nick at the moment. I did find a bit of a roughie here, and that's number eight, William West. Now, he was second on debut behind his stable companion, Speeding Bullet. The horse that ran third in that race was a horse called Golden Tatiana. She subsequently came out and franked that form. They renew rivalry. The difference this time round is that 8 William West is three kilos better off at the weights. He was finishing fast, so he is one that needs to be included. On the subject of Golden Tatiana, 
She beat the boys in the Trippy Stakes last time out. Every reason to think that she could possibly follow it up with another feature race win, as fillies do have a very good record in this race. And then I'm also including number 15, Double Door. Corne Orfa, Vaughan Marshall, he always gets his two-year-olds ready. This one certainly showed lots of guts and determination, fighting off the opposition all the way to the wire. So that's another one that needs to be included. Probably those five, to me, are the ones that needs to go in. You may need to put in one or two more, depending, of course, on what percentage of the pick six you'd like to take. Race seven is the race that they run for big prize money. 7.5 million rand in stakes. It's the World Sports Betting Gold Rush. And here we have a full field of 16 runners who will face the start. And I'm sure you read all about how the prospectus story work behind them getting their place in the lineup. And again, it's a race where you have to include quite a few. One Max Theata, for example, needs to go in. Very unlucky last time out. Alda de Mayo back on board. He'll be doing his best work late. Three King Regent, the winner of two and second last time out. Now his last run particularly caught the eye. He played up at the start. He had to be taken out. He was loaded last. He was slow away. He moved up to win his race, but then he got run out of it by without question, who has subsequently run second to his stable companion Rockpool in the politician. So that form line is holding up well, and he is the horse that is attracting the anti-post market support. Six seeking the one has been prepped for this particular race. And then there's eight well Aussie that also needs to go in. Justin Snaith at the barrier draw function was very bullish about his chances. He brings group one form into the race. He was fourth behind Charles Dickens last time out. And again, a big run can be expected from Team Snaith and Richard Faree. Then there's the unbeaten three-year-old filly number 11 winter greeting from the stable of Sean Terry. She certainly looks like a filly that's on the up and she could give the boys something to think about. And then I'm also going to include 14, Dave the King. I think this is a jockey strike with Christoph Sumio on board. Saddle slip last time out and despite that finished fifth, just behind Royal Aussie in the Guineas. It's a race where a case can probably be made for quite a few, so you need to put in as many as the budget does allow. The eighth race on the card is the Pongrass Cape Flying Championship. Wait for age grade one over 1,000 meters. How does the saying go? Blink and you'll miss it. Now this race, I think people will be approaching one of three ways. You're either banker, you look for one to cover with, or you have to go wide. The choice is yours. How are you going to structure it? If you are looking for the banker, then that could possibly be number 16, Princess Keller. She comes into the race off the back of two feature race wins over the shorter trip. She's certainly taken a new lease of life since joining the Sean Terry Yard and has come back to Cape Town. And there's every reason to believe that she could give the boys a galloping lesson on her current form. If you're looking for a backup, then I would suggest number one, Isi Vungu Vungu, Christoph Sumio. He's back to retain the ride. Very unlucky last time out, had to switch at a crucial stage, was absolutely flying at the finish and was beaten a nose on the wire. And there's every reason to believe that he could possibly go one better. So if you're gonna bank a Princess Keller, that's one way of looking at it. If you're gonna look for backup, include Isi Vungu Vungu. Beyond that, then you're going to need to put in quite a few. Probably the merchant's winner, uh, give me a prince will have to go in. Elysian Chief cannot be ignored. This Rio Carrari that always comes well this time of the year resonate. You see the list goes on and on and on. So it's for you to decide exactly how you're going to structure it. The big one then follows race nine. It runs at 10 past five on Saturday afternoon. The World Sports betting Cape Town met grade one over 2,000 meters. Now we've all got our fancies when it comes to this race. And in fact, the one thing I know most people enjoy most is if they've picked the winner and have been singing that horse's praises prior to the race and it wins, they will take the glory thereafter that they've chosen the winner of the Met. A very classy field of 19 horses will face the starter. And the two horses that has been attracting the most support and have been the two talking horses are the two three-year-olds. Number two, make it snappy, has the services of Keegan DeMello on board for the stable of Red Crawford. That stable really is in good nick at the moment. She comes into the race off a back of two Group 1 wins. She only carries 51 and a half kilograms, and if she gets away in the straight, it could be a case of come and catch me if you can in the run to the wire. 14, Cousin Casey, the boom three-year-old, he was second in the Hollywood Bets. Cape Guineas last time out, he was absolutely flying at the finish. Prior to that, he's had a host of wins to his credit. He was also last season's champion Equus two-year-old. And there's every reason to believe that he will be fit and well and rearing for action. And he once again has the services of Grand Fenikarik in the saddle, who knows him very, very well. Those are the two talking horses. We've all got our opinions. The likes of 
Jed Dodd probably comes into the equation. Runner-up last year while hoping to go one better. There's the Hollywood Bets Devon July winner, Sparkling Water, who takes her place. The defending champion and people's horse, Comedy Dung. Universal has been in good nick. There's also the Lomara Kings Plate winner, Al Mutana. So, it's for you to decide whether you're going to go short, you're going to go wide, or you're just going to stick with your fancy. But one thing's for sure, it's going to be a cracker of a race. The last of the features on the card is the new turf carriers Western Cape Stayers Grade 2, over 2,800 metres. And here, many of them will be renewing rivalry. And if one takes uh, the chairman's form into account, then 12 Chrome Yellow, who won that race, probably does look like one that we can lean towards. But if one looks at his course and distance record, he's had three runs for a fourth. So he's not really effective over this kind of trip. So you're going to want to play with a little bit of cover in this race, maybe box a few horses in the quartet. Two cents a Unica was certainly finishing off well, despite the fact that he is a kid and a half worse off at the weights with Chrome Yellow. The way he finished does suggest that he'll probably enjoy the longer trip. Rex Union always does well over these marathon events. And then also Silver Host is another one that needs to be included. A very tricky contest again, as far as that marathon event is concerned. But one thing is for sure, it's a draw card because that race jumps in the lengthening shadows of the grandstand right in front of the winning post. And everyone normally congregates to see the loading process and then the horses do the full lap of the kilometer circuit. After race 10, there's race 11 and 12 to come. The last race on the card gets underway at 11.55 and then the official party will get going. We're in for a treat. And then to coin another phrase on the front page of the computer form, it's a feast of first class racing. That's what we can look forward to together with big whirlpools, mega carryovers and a bumper crowd is also expected here at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth. If you're unable to join us, all the action can be watched on Channel 240, SABC and Supersport. We'll also be bringing you coverage of all the festivities as it unfolds here on Saturday afternoon. Trust the day will live up to all sorts of expectations and it will be a profitable and enjoyable Met experience for you. Thanks for joining me. I'm Ravon Smith. I look forward to seeing you at the races.